Hello, it's Katya for Metal Wani. A few days ago, I spoke to Tobias Samet, who was in London in order to promote his new Aventasia concept album, Moonglow, which will come out in February next year. Oh, and also close your eyes and imagine that you are in an old Victorian London pub, because that is where Tobias is speaking from. You had a few breaks in England whilst you were writing the album. Can you tell us about those breaks? Did they inspire you to write the album? Absolutely, absolutely. It's uh, you know I, I find England to be high, highly. Um, it's really funny because most people here don't understand what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> but it's, it's probably if, if you're if you're living in a certain place, you don't appreciate the the, the, the positive aspects about it. You take everything. For, for granted and I, I just like it I find it highly highly inspiring the UK in general um, m most of my favorite bands are from here I like Victorian architecture mm -hmm. I like the fact how tradition is embraced over here I like I don't, I don't know why there's no reason really and it's, it's really hard to, to explain but it's inspirational to me when I would sit in a pub here and I'd, I'd, I'd go uh, I'd, I'd order a beer or two or three sometimes <laughs> and I sit there, and you have those mahogany um, uh, furniture in there, and then that that, that red carpet on the ground, which yeah. is which is really weird. It's a pub, <laughs> and I mean, English people have the worst reputation of drinking behavior when it comes to drinking behavior. If you ask around in Mallorca or Ibiza, yes, and yes. then you have a pub with carpet floor, and and red carpet with golden fleur de lis on it yeah. or paisley <laughs> and then people vomit all over the place ah. but it's so, it's, to me it's inspiring not the vomit part but no I thought so. <laughs> but um but, but in, in general you know you're looking at a mental piece and mm. and um yeah I, i'm sitting there i'm drinking a beer and i'm sitting in a nice environment and i hear mm. that those heavy british accents not so much in london but it's inspiring, and I disappear, and all of a sudden I feel, and all of a sudden I feel like Shakespeare, and um, mm -hmm. in a different century. And I've been very, very much inspired by uh, of the Victorian revival of the Gothic novel. And I don't know, there's many reasons to like England. The concept of the album seems to be steeped very deeply in uh, a Victorian atmosphere, and I was wondering, how did you choose the concept for the album? Did it sort of come to you naturally or did it impose itself or um basically um I, I i'm inspired by certain things and uh, historical things are very inspiring to me but i don't want to write when i when i come up with a concept i want to fill it with life and i want to i want to use my lyrics not as plain storytelling uh, mm -hmm. that's nothing that seems to be too appealing to me i want to write something off my chest i want to i want to I want to be creative. I want to deliver art. I want to. I want to do something that that comes out of out of myself and not just dream up a, a fantastic story that's got nothing to do with my personality. Mm -hmm. So it's always. Um, I think those concepts write themselves. Um, I just. I just said the fact um, or the idea of writing a, a concept about a misfit creature that is. Uh, created into a world where it doesn't find an attachment to its environment mm -hmm. and where it feels out of place and um, and where it feels uh, it can't meet the um, expectations that people have towards it and that his environment has towards it and therefore it escapes to to the to the dark it turns to the dark mm -hmm. to be invisible mm -hmm. to um, to find shelter in literally invisibility that was a very very I, c I could write a grotesque story that could have been written also by somebody like Arthur Macken or um, all, Tim Burton maybe it could mm -hmm. have been written by some of these people mm -hmm. but also it gave me an option to write about me without blatantly admitting it <laughs> which I in fact do now but uh, it, it gave me an option to write my own thoughts and feelings yeah. and incorporate them in, in, into, into a frame into a beautiful setting mm -hmm. and um, 
yeah, dreaming those kinds of stories up is 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 something I, I never really planned, it and it's really hard to describe the working process. Mm. I think it's it's like you have this bucket in your this mental bucket or or a barrel, and there's a drop after drop. It fills subconsciously mm. when you're walking around, when you're reading stuff, when you are uh, doing doing own stuff. It it just it just it just happens, and and after a while, when you write stuff, when you want to put a concept together, mm. um, you have already gathered a lot of material mm. in your subconscious, and that's um, and that's helpful. But it's really hard to analyze my working process. Uh, you found yourself in quite an unusual uh, position, which is you had a lot of time on your hand for, you know, not being busy with that guy and other uh, things. So so you had this freedom that seemed to, uh, you, you thought maybe you, you wanted to have a rest? Yeah, well, it, it was, I, I wanted to have a rest. Yeah, I wanted, you know, I didn't necessarily need a rest from being creative. I was, I was just, I was, the tour was, was over the, Ghost Life tour, and I came home, and there were expectations. Everybody else knew what I was going to be. Only I wasn't knowing, and I thought it was shocking that everybody else had a clear vision of what I was doing. And I thought, I thought, if you want to keep your intuition, uh, and if you want to keep your sanity, you should make sure that you are not a passenger but a pilot of of what you're doing, of your life. And 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 that's why I said, okay. Uh, people were asking, like, we know you're going to do a new, uh, uh, you're going to play Vakken uh, next year. Are you going to do it with Edgar or with Avantasia? It was obvious I would play it. It was just a matter which band I would play with. And so I said, okay, no, emergency break. I don't do anything. I will, I will, I will build an own studio and I will just be myself. But I, I was creating new material because that's also catharsis and that's also therapy and I love writing music and I had this own studio where I could record some of the stuff mm. and then I thought maybe it's going to be a solo project but after a short while I realized that Avantasia is kind of a solo project just with treasured guests and also a song sounded like Avantasia so I said Never mind, it's going to be another Avantasia album. <laughs> There you go. An unexpected album, uh, like a surprise. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's just, it's just, I realize that, that being creative to me, I don't perceive it as work. I need to do it because I love it so much. I'm restless, and that's sometimes a blessing and sometimes it's a curse. An Avantasia tool must take quite a long time to prepare, I guess. Well, an Avantasia tool is actually. It's a lot of preparation, yeah. and of course you have to get... I mean, we we don't tour for very long because um, there's only so much time that we have for everybody that we need is available. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody's got their own stuff to, mm -hmm. to do. I mean, there's Bob Catley, there's Jeff Tay, there's Eric Martin, Ronnie Atkins, Jon Landy, uh, Herbie Langhans, Ollie Hartmann. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of singers, mm -hmm. and um, and they they need to... They need to I have a look at their own careers as well, so we only have a relatively limited amount of time uh, to do this. And it has to be well prepared, but I have, I'm surrounded by the best people in the world, and they take care of everything. So mm. I just have to wreck my brains about, are we going to play 27 or 24 songs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure we're going to play, for sure we're going to play three hours at least. Um, yeah. And... Um, Yeah, we have to. We have so many singers, so everybody needs to have a stage time. We're, it's going to be a, a big show. It's going to be a big show. No support act, just Avantasia. Yeah. And yeah, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Three hours, that, that's huge. Are you going to like have a break in between, you know, I don't know, like, like they do at the opera or something, because three hours is... <laughs> It's mental. No, we, we never. We, we did it before. We, on the last wow. day, we sometimes played three and a half, three forty-five. Oh we don't God. have a break, really, um, <laughs> unless unless Amnesty International will take care of our drummer. <laughs> If they have an eye on our drummer, I think we might have a break. But <laughs> You've got some new collaborations for Moonglow, for example, uh, Mille Petroza from Creator. Now, to me, that sounds like quite a, a, a surprising, very welcome guest. Um, that must have been quite interesting. Uh, it is really interesting, but it was actually, it happened quite naturally because yeah. Miller's a friend of mine. We've been friends for a very long time. Yeah. We had worked together on that guy's Hellfire Club album, 
where he was singing guest vocal for bonus track. Mm -hmm. And on this new record, um, uh, you know, we always talked about having him as a guest in Avantasia, and it never materialized. But uh, for this new, because I never had the track actually to do it, but for this new song, a uh, new album, I had a song that was suited for Miller, and I thought, that's the right track, I gotta <laughs> ask Miller. And he immediately said yes, I mean, even though, I mean, he's portraying some very, very nasty, evil character, and uh, mm -hmm. very angry and aggressive, and that, that it, it, it's, um, it works, it works. And it sounds natural, and it doesn't stick out like a like a sore thumb. Um, it is really something that sounds natural, and that sounds like it belongs there. It's, it mm -hmm. it wasn't um, it wasn't a big deal. I mm -hmm. mean, we we get more in common than most people think. We're good friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's lovely. Is he going to be on tour then uh, uh, with Avantasia, or is it not working out? No. No, M Miller. Miller's probably gonna. Miller's always on tour, but yes. always with creation. <laughs> Miller's true. constantly on tour. You said that Moonglow has been put together in many eerie and haunted places. Is it literally true? Um, eerie places, yes. Haunted. I always. I mean, <laughs> haunted. To me, a place is haunted if it's got a special atmosphere. Mm. I don't necessarily mean there were ghosts and uh, things flying around and things disappearing. <laughs> Um, you know, haunted is for me. It's 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 like it was atmospheric, and it was put together in old hotels, Victorian hotels, um, in Birmingham, in London. It was done in the forest in in my home village. I did some of the stuff there. I recorded some of the stuff in a holiday home in um, in uh, 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 in an island uh, or on an island called Sylt mm -hmm. in in the Northern Sea near Germany or German Island. So, yes, I, I put it together in a lot of characteristic places. Mm -hmm. And I've read an article about psychogeography, which means uh, where, where scientists have found out that um, your environment, your ge geographical environment, has an extreme influence and impact on your creative output. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it doesn't take scientists to find that out. Everybody who's been working in a rehearsing room... Um, in a smelly rehearsing room um, and in a fancy studio knows it. So, um, of course, your environment has an impact on your creativity. I, you know, I, I, I just love to work in characteristic places and, and, and yeah, character places. And, and that was the case. But I, I haven't encountered too many ghosts. Apparently, you've got John Atkinson Grimshaw's work adorning your walls in uh, your study. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's I, lo I love John Atkinson Grimshaw. The cover artwork itself has nothing to do with him. That mm -hmm. was done by a Swedish painter, but um, but of course, it's all in that same eerie, yes. um, embellished, lovely, but at the same time a little bit grotesque mm -hmm. um, direction. And John Atkinson Grimshaw, I love his paintings. They're highly. Uh, inspiring to me. I have them in my in my uh, in my study. Some mm -hmm. of the paintings, not the originals, unfortunately, <laughs> because they are very very. I think they're probably half a million or more. Uh, no, it's just lousy, lousy fifty pounds uh, copies, um, uh, framed copies. But I have I have one over my piano, and when I play the piano, I look at it. I look at an old uh, uh, haunted house. Um, um, in 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 the in the in the moon glow, mm -hmm. so to speak, in the moonlight, and uh, yeah, it's 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 inspiring. It's dreamy and it's highly imaginative, and I need that. I need that. I cannot work in a sterile mm. place, and it doesn't. Uh, no, no, I need really atmospheric places mm -hmm. and atmospheric, dreamy inspiration. Now, the illustration for the cover of the Moonglow album is absolutely fantastic. It's by Alexander Jansen. How, how did you get in contact with him? Yeah, he's a, he's a great painter. He's a great painter. And I, the funny thing is I, I ran into him coincidentally. I just wanted to have an artwork that would suit the album. And uh, I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know anybody who could deliver it and I was I was checking the internet and I coincidentally bumped into his art immediately contacted him and said I like it it's so dreamy it's fantastic it's eerie and beautiful at the same time uh -huh. and it's childish and at the same time it's 
scary. And mm -hmm. I like that very, very expressionist uh, uh, ex expression, expressionistic. I don't know. So um, I asked him if he would be up for uh, creating a cover artwork. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, mm -hmm. I'll do it. I think it's the first cover artwork or the only he's ever done. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, really, really happy with it.